in this lecture i'll be uh, discussing non neoplastic vascular abnormalities of the orbit like cavernous sinus thrombosis and carotid cavernous fistulae uh, starting with cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, this refers to clotting within the cavernous sinus usually resulting from infections such as sinusitis orbital and preseptal cellulitis or otitis there is a high mortality rate uh, 20% treated and up to about 100% untreated die um, features are of rapid onset and may include severe headache malaise nausea and vomiting unilateral and often bilateral proptosis chemosis congestion uh, of the facial conjunctival and retinal veins reduced vision and signs resulting from compromised function of, of the third to sixth cranial nerves which run through the cavernous sinus uh, may be noticed diagnosis is with imaging especially with mri and mri venography uh, systemic infections um, uh, sorry investigations for the infections are also performed including lumbar puncture treatment consists of intravenous antibiotics and sometimes surgical drainage the whole uh, uh, pathology can be demonstrated in the picture here as you can see uh, there is thrombosis on the right side which involves uh, all the uh, the internal carotid artery which is on the left side you can see here and the veins uh, and the nerves uh, on the uh, <coughs> border including third nerve and the fourth nerve uh, and the branches of the fifth nerve while the sixth nerve is, is in the close proximity of the uh, internal carotid artery when the thrombosis occur uh, the most frequently involved nerve is the sixth nerve so moving on uh, now carotid cavernous fistula uh, involves the development of an arteriovenous fistula between the carotid artery and venous cavernous sinus with the rise in venous pressure and in the sinus and structures draining to it um, so uh, Ocular manifestations occur because of the venous and arterial stasis around the eye and orbit, increased episcleral venous pressure and decrease in the arterial blood flow to the cranial nerves within the cavernous sinus. Mm. Uh, carotid cavernous uh, fistulae are classified into direct and indirect forms. Now, uh, according to the Barrow's classification, uh, the uh, first type, type A, is the direct. Uh, carotid cavernous fistula uh, where there is direct connection between the uh, internal carotid artery and the venous uh, cavernous sinus while from B to D there is uh, com communication through the meningeal branches uh, from the internal carotid artery or external carotid artery to the cavernous sinus uh, according to the various classification which I will discuss later now here you can see there are three subtypes b c and d are the indirect types are the type a as you can see has the direct communication now uh, direct history are high flow shunts in which carotid artery blood passes directly into the cavernous sinus through a defect in the wall of intracavernous portion of the internal carotid artery as a result of trauma in 75 percent of cases including surgery spontaneous structure of an intracavernous carotid aneurysm or an atherosclerotic artery, the later frequently in the middle aged inhabitants and women. Uh, spontaneous fistulae usually have lower flow. A uh, patient presents uh, uh, maybe days or weeks after head injury with a classical triad of pulsatile proptosis, conjunctival chemosis, and bushing sound in their head. Um, uh, immediate visual loss may be due to ocular or optic nerve damage at the type of time of head trauma however delayed visual loss may also occur which with the result of exposure keratopathy uh, secondary glaucoma central retinal vein occlusion um, anterior segment ischemia or ischemic optic neuropathy signs are usually ipsilateral to the fistula but may be bilateral uh, between the two cavernous sinuses marked epibulbar vascular uh, dilatation as it is seen in the first picture uh, can occur chemosis commonly hemorrhagic particularly in the early stages as it is seen in the picture that is below can also occur and observed um, 
increased iop due to elevated epithelial venous pressure and orbital congestion and sometimes angle exposure glaucoma uh, can also be present anterior uh, segment ischemia characterized by corneal epithelial edema aqueous cells and flare in severe cases iris atrophy cataract and rubiosus iridis uh, can occur ptosis due to third nerve involvement Ophthalmoplegia 60 to 70% due to ocular motor nerve damage from the initial trauma or intracavernous aneurysm or the fistula itself. The sixth cranial nerve is most frequently effective uh, as we understand that um, because of its free floating location within the cavernous sinus. The third and fourth nerves situated in the lateral wall of the sinus are less frequently involved in gorgement and swelling of the extraocular muscles. Uh, also contribute to the defective uh, ocular motility. Fundus examination shows optic disc swelling, venous dilatation and intraretinal hemorrhages from the venous stasis and impaired retinal blood flow. Ven uh, vitreous hemorrhage is uh, actually very rare. Now, investigations include CT and MRI, which may demonstrate prominence of the superior ophthalmic vein. Uh, as we can see here uh, in the picture, you can see uh, the superior ophthalmic vein here is very prominent How and the muscles uh, on the same side, uh, all of them, as compared to the other side, they are quite engorged. Now, uh, though these may only be visible with the direct testimony. Orbital Doppler imaging may show abnormal flow patterns, particularly in the superior orbital vein. Definitive diagnosis may involve uh, selective catheter, digital subtraction, and geography, especially in the mild dural fistula, though CT and MRI and geography can be useful. Most carotid cavernous fistulae are not life threatening. The organ at major risk is the eye. Surgery is indicated if spontaneous closure does not occur. Uh, a post-traumatic fistula is much less likely to close on its own than the spontaneous fistula because of the higher blood flow. Treatment is likely to consist of a transarterial approach to repair the artery, for example, a coil, as it is seen in the picture, or occlude the involved sinuses, for example, a coil, balloon, or other. Uh, craniotomy after uh, for arterial uh, repair is occasionally needed and as you can see here in the first picture as you can see coil embolization of the direct uh, carotid cavernous fistula the first picture shows uh, early arterial phase uh, catheter angiogram showing filling of the cavernous sinus uh, as it is shown by the arrow in the picture uh, And the superior ophthalmic vein, uh, by, uh, shown by the arrowhead, uh, by, while the second picture, the picture that is below, uh, shows uh, deposition of coils in the cavernous sinus. The fistula is closed and there is no uh, retrograde flow in the superior ophthalmic vein. So, uh, this is how uh, the coil treatment is done. About the indirect fistula, uh, as we have already mentioned, the Barrow's classification type B, C, and D are the types of the indirect fistula. Type B is where there are meningeal branches of the carotid artery are uh, communicating with the cavernous sinus, uh, while type C, where the meningeal branches are connecting with the uh, meningeal branches of the external carotid artery actually are uh, communicating with the cavernous sinus. Uh, as you can see in the picture, while well, type C is where uh, both internal and external carotid artery uh, and terminal branches again uh, or dural branches are connecting with the uh, uh, cavernous sinus. So, uh, here uh, these are the uh, uh, anatomical bases. Uh, these are dural shunts. The intracavernous portion of the internal carotid artery remains intact. Arterial blood flow through the meningeal branches of the external or internal carotid arteries indirectly into the cavernous sinus and the clinical features 
uh, are subtler than in a direct fish law, such as the uh, uh, such that the condition may be overlooked. Spontaneous rupture of the atherosclerotic artery of a congenital or a congenital malformation is the usual cause and may be precipitated by a minor trauma or straining. Connective tissue and collagen vascular uh, disorders can be associated. Signs um, and symptoms are also uh, they are the basis of diagnosis, both signs and symptoms. Now, symptoms include gradual onset of redness uh, in one or both eyes, and it is uh, usually a typical presentation and caused by congenital vascular engorgement. Signs include uh, milder uh, epibulbar vascular dilatation than the direct fistula, as you can see in the picture. Uh, there is this uh, mild epibulbar. Um, vascular dilatation and uh, if uh, we zoom it a little bit you will see the corkscrew uh, arrangement of the uh, vessels as well exaggerated ocular pulsations which is uh, readily detected on the slit lamp uh, application to a tonometry uh, the presence of corkscrew epibulbar vessels which i already mentioned uh, in the picture here as well uh, as you can see they the appearance is like that of a uh, corkscrew vessels here. Uh, raised uh, intraocular pressure, which is often bilateral but higher on the side of the fistula. Proctosis and brewery are mild if present. Ophthalmoplegia caused by sex nerve palsy or swelling of extraocular muscle in marked cases. Fundus may be normal or manifest moderate venous dilatation with the later uh, tortuosity as with the corkscrew conjunctival vessels. This is uh, not pathognomic, uh, of course. Uh, now, investigations are similar as we have already discussed that. Uh, how we opt or orbital Doppler imaging is more useful in cases of uh, indirect fistula as opposed to CT and MRI. Now, treatment if required uh, usually involves transvenous occlusion of the uh, involved sinus as compared to transarterial in cases of direct. Uh, spontaneous closure or occlusion, uh, occluding thrombosis sometimes up to 50% uh, in cases occurs. Intermittent carotid compression under specialist supervision has been reported to increase the likelihood that this will take place. Uh, so, uh, prognosis is better as compared to uh, other diseases. So, this is where we will conclude the lecture. If you like it, please subscribe and like the lecture as well. Thank you.